are in Oluwalu Beach on the island of Maui. What are we here for? We were here uh, kayaking with whales. And what did we do? Saw no whales. But you did see? Turtles. And I went snorkeling and I saw turtles. I did drown over the beach. It was lovely. That'll be in this video. So uh, let's do a couple of things about uh, Oluwalu Beach. We are south of Lahaina, but we're over on that side of the island of Maui. And it's about a 40 minute drive from the port of Kahului. We took a taxi over here. Here's why. A taxi can get into the port and pick you up and go door to door. If you Uber, you're gonna have to walk outside the port and down the street to a pickup spot. And it's probably a good 10, maybe 12 minute walk. Did not see any whales. Uh, did see sea turtles, but uh, actually on the drive here this morning, a little bit earlier, driving along the coast, I saw, you know, just spouts everywhere. It's like little mushrooms on the ocean. So quite a few, and they're definitely up there feeding and doing different things. We're filming this in mid-February, and this is definitely a great time to come. Uh, the whales have been calving here, they're feeding, they're getting ready to make a long trip up to Alaska. Those waters for summer where they're feeding well. Mid-February is a wonderful time to be here in Hawaii and Maui. Too. And whales we're seeing all have calves. We are seeing a ton of calves. The population is doing great. What kind of whales are you seeing? Humpbacks. Lots of humpbacks. But I think uh, some of the islands had uh, like up to five different kinds of whales. Yeah, you should see mink and... Gray whales. Yes. Yeah. So, enjoy. Because of the fires in Lahaina in the last couple of years, Lahaina is no longer open, so the only cruise port available in Maui now is at Kahului. So Kahului is on the eastern side of the island. Lahaina was over on the west side of the island. We've spent a lot of time here. We have a video on the road to Hana. We've also got Haleakala, and we've been to the Iao Valley up in the north. This trip, because of the time of year, we are here for the whales and the wildlife. So we are crossing the island and heading over to Oluwala. It's not what you made for, and there's nothing that is too late for. As we drove up the coastline, we saw whale signs everywhere. There were spouts constantly as we came up that coast. We met our guide at mile marker 14 on Olawalu and go to the beach there. So we headed there and arrived in time to do some filming and some snorkeling before our kayak adventure began. This beach is protected by a large reef system that's kind of an intermittent reef, meaning that there are spaces where you can go through it, but the reef itself is fairly tall and the water is fairly short. As the tide was low, we were in even shallower water, so you really have to be careful, both snorkeling and on a kayak, that you don't uh, harm the coral by getting stuck up on it either with your body, your feet, or your watercraft. Once you get past the reef, there is open deep water where the whales would be. It really is a question of getting past the reef if you're going to go do the pelagic whale watching. But if you're just wanting to snorkel, you've got a fairly large area in which to explore. And as you turn around and look back at the shore, the views are just stunning. These are those beautiful green Maui mountains that if you were to go further north, you would end up in the Yao Valley. This highway surrounds the entire north side of the island. And it's On this 
outing, we had a group of friends with us that were all doing the kayak trip together. You will meet Kim and Stan, who are from Nashville, Tennessee, Marilyn and Rhonda, who are from Washington State. They are the dynamic mother-daughter duo that joined us for whale watching in Oahu. You'll also meet Cece. This is one of those excursions no one in our party except Jonathan and Jennifer had any experience with kayaking, and that probably was an additional challenge that we may not have appropriately taken into consideration. While we waited for our kayak excursion to begin, I did some snorkeling to investigate that reef out there. There is quite a bit of coral and it is really shallow, so the visibility was awfully good. There were a number of fish, although I didn't see large schools of anything, just a whole lot of tangs, parrotfish, trumpetfish, and other exotics. Within the reef, there were a number of different kinds of corals, and I also saw lots of sea urchins, as well as anemones and some cucumbers, but the big surprise was the turtle. It was resting in a quiet spot, fairly well camouflaged in the coral. Reef health is important. We were really careful to make sure that we used reef safe suntan lotion. Didn't touch our feet to the reef at all and really wanted to keep the boats off the reef as well. But this reef is really tricky because it is so shallow. There are parts of it where the reef is actually sticking out over the water and you can see that in the tides and the ripples and the way that the waves fall against the shore. Where it is really shallow, not only does the color change, but the wave patterns will change. Here's a fun fish fact. Many fish have a black dot at the tail end of their body, which is a confusing message to send to predators who don't know which end to bite and hopefully they bite the tail end and not the face end. After swimming around the reef I went back to check on the turtle who just as I came up was taking off. Sea turtles have fore and hind flippers and I had concerns about this turtle's Four flipper on the right side. It just didn't look like it was moving as well, easily, or with the same range of motion as his left side was. So he may have needed that rest. At the beach we saw a number of kayakers get in the water and head out. We also saw some fishing boats go out and we saw a few of what looked like whale watching expedition style boats head out. But it was a really quiet day and we had much of the water to ourselves. shore, it was time to get ready for the kayak ride. 
This was going to be a really different kind of an experience because the kayaks we were using are hands-free kayaks. Instead of using a paddle, you use pedals and so your feet are doing the work. The boat has a rudder that you actually maneuver like a dial to turn left or right. And the pedals are at the front of the kayak. Your feet fit into them and they go through the center of the kayak like a center board. But the center board is split and every time you're pedaling, you're actually moving them forwards and backwards like little fins. This is a perfect setup for something like whale watching where you want to be able to have a camera in your hands and you don't want to have to worry about your paddle. You're also sitting upright which makes the kayak quite a bit more comfortable and you keep your legs up on top of the kayak so you aren't sitting inside of it. These are wide kayaks giving them great stability. Additionally, you can add outriggers on the side which makes them even more stable. Because these are tandem kayaks, meaning two people can use them, they can be a little bit harder to maneuver. So having them on wheels really gives you the ability to get them from the truck or the trailer down to the beach and into the water. These wheels were really great because they could be removed once the boat was in the water and then stored on the boat. So you didn't have to run back up to the truck trailer. You carried your entire outfit with you. We had some basic instruction about the basic mechanics and the workings of the boat and how to maneuver it in the water. You pedal forward with your feet, never too fast and not really long strides. We're not really racing, we're just there to get where we need to go. And you use the dial on the left in order to turn left or right. That's what controls the rudder. There is a paddle strapped to the side so that if you get too close to a reef, you can use the paddle as a little extra momentum to get you moving or going in the direction you need. It's also easier to get the paddle to get you off the reef than it is to have the rudder or the pedals stuck on the reef. Marilyn is 86 and she and Rhonda both have some mobility issues. So getting them up on the kayaks and out on the water was really special. I'm gonna tell you, it took some bravery from them and some trust in us and we appreciated that, but really loved being able to share an adventure with friends like this. These girls have a lot to teach the rest of us about fear and fun, taking chances and making the most of life. seven guests and four kayaks and our guide wanted to get two of the kayaks out over the reef and then come back and get the other two kayaks. He took Rhonda, Marilyn and Jonathan out across the reef and then came back to get the rest of us. As the winds were beginning to pick up a little bit we were all having some difficulty staying on course so it really was important to use our feet and use that rudder to be able to wind our way in a big S through the reef. There were some pretty tight turns and it required some real finesse with the boat. We had one boat that didn't make it across the reef and so we had to call our trip and head back in to shore to rescue them off of the reef. So we didn't get whales. But we did get out on the kayaks, we did make it out to open water, and there's something that's a huge win just about getting out there. Today's excursion really became more about group, team, relationships, fear, challenge, and less about the wildlife. In the end, a day at the beach in Maui is nothing to complain about. We had an amazingly good time. And we all came back better friends, stronger people, and a little bit sunburned. And I don't know what more you could ask of Hawaii life than that. We climbed back in our taxi for the ride home, and as you can see, it was all smiles. Where's your next video from? Uh, either Hilo or Kona. So watch for that. Yeah, love you.
came You're by just taxi. These names up, aren't you? <laughs> and Help them for a second. What did you want to say? I love this place. <laughs> what is it you love about Maui? Is it Maui or Oluwale that you love? What's... Uh, Hawaii, Timor, Maui in particular. Uh, How does Maui? Yeah, we did. Uh, well, blow, blowing, whatever. Well, what do you call it? Spout. Spouts everywhere.